Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I'm so honored to be able to be here, uh, give you some explanation about <laughs> what feng shui is. Uh, so, uh, and particularly for people who come to Hong Kong to visit us, uh, so uh, you may not know, Hong Kong is considered to be the feng shui capital of the world. Uh, so therefore, <laughs> Uh, if you come here, uh, it's a very good opportunity to know a little bit. Uh, feng Shui is actually very popular uh, in the last 10 years or so. Uh, but I think the term, uh, most of the people, uh, when you mention Feng Shui, they may realize uh, you, know, you are talking about how to put your furniture. Uh, so, uh, but actually, uh, still, I, I will expect 99.9% uh, .9 of people cannot properly explain what Feng Shui really is. Uh, it's still a, a very confusing subject. <laughs> so uh, I hope uh, th in this short time I will make it less confusing for you. Uh, so of course, uh, 45 minutes uh, not possible to to teach you how to do Feng Shui, uh, but at least you have some knowledge of what feng shui is about. So uh, first thing, uh, what does the word feng shui mean? Uh, they are Chinese. Uh, feng is wind, uh, shui is water. So what's wind and water to do with your life? Uh, so actually, uh, this is a very unique system of knowledge. Uh, if anybody asks me what feng shui is, uh, usually the reporters want a very short, concise sentence. So I will say, feng shui is an ancient Chinese knowledge which is talking about how the environment is affecting people's well-being. Uh, so, the Chinese has discovered there are influences in our environment. Uh, you can call it anything. You can call it energy. Uh, you can call it qi. Uh, Chinese always use the term qi to explain anything they don't know. Qi uh, gong. Uh, so, that's qi. Uh, so, then, Ah, it's a kind of chi existing in our environment. And then the purpose of feng shui is to identify there are good cheese and bad cheese. Uh, in everybody's home, uh, everybody's house, everybody has to live in an environment, everybody has to work in an office. Uh, and how do you choose an office? Uh, how do you choose a house? Actually, you only can see, choose what you see. Uh, you can choose the superficial environment. Uh, like, uh, what can you see from outside your window? Uh, how big it is? Uh, what size is it? And what is the shape of the, uh, the floor plan? That's all you choose, but that is quite dangerous. Because actually, there are things you cannot see, which is affecting your life. Uh, so uh, you can imagine. Uh, so we can, uh, let me try to use, the, yeah, first thing. So the ancient people. At the beginning, they want to find a place to live. And what's the purpose of hiding themselves? They want to protect themselves against bad weather. They want to protect themselves against fierce animals. And they need to be convenient. A convenient to water, convenient to where they find food. So therefore, they have de developed some theories about physical environment. Uh, so therefore, they believe uh, that kind of physical environment will serve this purpose, will keep them safe, make them comfortable. So therefore, that's the first thing the ancient people will come into mind, the physical environment. Uh, that's factor number one. But as they become more and more civilized, uh, when people become more and more civilized, they begin to appreciate something deeper, something they cannot see, but have an influence on their life. Uh, for example, what are those things? Directions. Uh, direction is an abstract idea. Uh, it's, it's not a physical object, but it has an influence on your house. So therefore, they will find uh, their house, if they choose a cave, uh, facing north will be very cold in winter, uh, facing east or west will receive very strong sun, and then why not choose south? 
Huh? So therefore, you go to Beijing, you see many or most of the houses are choose facing south. And the Chinese particularly paying more money for house facing south. Uh, of course, facing south is not only because it has got more moderate weather, there are other meaning. Uh, for example, south is considered as fire element. And fire element is the sun. And the sun is the most positive, powerful energy to cure any bad energy. Uh, you know, you see vampire movies, when the sun comes out, vampires disappear. Uh, so, okay, so the second factor uh, comes in is directions. Uh, so then, when you get getting more and more intelligent, therefore you begin to see, not begin to see, uh, begin to realize Something which is at play, but it's not a physical object you cannot see. But something still affects your life. Uh, so first thing now you know is the physical environment. Second thing is the directions. What else? Uh, the answer is here. Time. Factor of time is also very important. Uh, so, for example, you have chosen a cave uh, or chosen a house. Uh, you leave them live in the house all the time. The house doesn't change. Huh? You're still sleeping in the same bed, and the house is still the same shape. Nothing could change. But why your life will change? Uh, why sometimes you feel everybody is smiling at you? Sometimes you feel everything is becoming difficult, uh, more challenging. Uh, sometimes you feel you get uncomfortable and you cannot sleep well. Huh? So what has changed? Nothing has changed. You are sleeping in the same room, sleeping in the same bed, same color. You do not move any furniture. So therefore, something else is at play. And what is that thing which has changed? Time. Uh, so therefore, now we, are, we point out there are three important factors which compose a system of knowledge to understand your environment. So first thing is the physical environment. Second thing is directions, uh, and third is time. So when you add up all these three important factors together, we have a body of knowledge that is feng shui. Uh, that is exactly the understanding of how those factors affect your life. Uh, so therefore, uh, in feng shui, first thing, we talk about these three kind of factors, but we put it into two groups. So in feng shui, you read some feng shui books, it will tell you we have form school and compass school. So the first group is physical form. Therefore, we call form school. Our form means shapes. And the second group is more abstract. You need to measure your compass. So therefore, we call it compass school. So that's talking about direction and time. Uh, so the, actually, when feng shui was first invented in China, we date back to 2600 BC. Uh, so what was at that time feng shui was invented? It was the time the compass was invented. Because when you do feng shui, you have to measure with compass. And the compass was said to be invented by the Yellow Emperor when he was fighting other tribal kings. Uh, he lost his way. So therefore, he has to make a compass to guide him out of the forest to defeat his enemy. So that's the first mentioning of the compass. So that was 2600 BC. Uh, so therefore, when you have the compass, you can measure direction. You can develop more knowledge about this system. And then, at that time, people don't call the subject feng shui. Uh, they call it with many funny names, like geography, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but to, uh, later on, the term feng shui actually appeared about 250 AD. So that is a very important book uh, called The Book for Burial. Uh, this is, if you don't know who is Yellow Emperor, that is the, this is him. Uh, he made a magnetic needle and he fixed it on his chariot. So that finger is called South Ponting Finger. Uh, because the Chinese at that time they misunderstood the magnetic pole is in the south. So therefore they make south pointing thicker. Okay, now that is the monster. Uh, the yellow emperor was fighting in the battle. That is the monster. Uh, looks really like a monster. 
Uh, so he created fog. So the yellow emperor was trapped in the fog. So that's why he invented this compass to guide him out of the fog. Okay, then uh, this is a book which coming out in 280. Uh, so this is a man uh, who has written a book telling people how to find a good spot to bury ancestors. So uh, at that time, the Chinese already developed the custom. They believe uh, if they go into the mountain to choose a spot of good chi, good energy, so then bury the ancestor there. And then it will generate a lot of benefit. And the benefit will pass on to the descendants, uh, to future generations. So therefore, already become a very popular common practice. So, but the problem is, uh, they, you talk about qi, but can you see qi? No, nobody can see. So therefore, how do you know this spot has got good qi or bad qi? So therefore, this guy, uh, he's a feng shui master called Kwok Po, and he has written a book. The, this book is to describe to you what kind of mountain and water configuration will give you a good chi. So therefore, uh, the book talks about different kinds of landscape. Uh, quite boring to read. Uh, but you don't have to read the book. Uh, all you need to understand is one simple sentence, which is very also not easy to understand. Uh, so it says, the energy of the dragon will be dispersed by wind, will stop at the boundary of water. So that was the sentence which gave us the term feng shui. Because you can notice uh, in this sentence, he put wind and water as the most important factor for you to find a spot of good chi. So therefore, now we understand why we feng shui is called wind and water. It's actually coming from this sentence. And what does he mean? Uh, why you have to pay attention to wind and water? So first thing, wind. So many people, <laughs> even though they talk about feng shui, they do not understand this part. So wind actually is negative, no good. Huh? So that's why he said the energy of the dragon will be dispersed by, by wind. First thing is, what do you mean by energy of the dragon? And what is a dragon? Uh, it's not a dinosaur. Uh, the Chinese dragon is a long animal, uh, like a snake. Huh? Therefore, it travels a long, long distance. So therefore, the Chinese call their mountain range as a dragon, uh, because it travels far, far, thousands of miles. So therefore, all the landscape uh, in the mountain, you have energy. So this is, we can only tell, say it's a chi. What is chi, we don't know. Huh? So therefore, in the mountain, in the landscape, there is chi. So if you want to find the chi, where is a good chi to bury your ancestor or to build your house? So you have to look for two conditions. Huh? So you, because you cannot see the chi, how do you know the chi is here? So there are two conditions. One is wind, one is water. So the first condition is he suggests you to avoid the wind because the wind will blow away your energy. Very simple. So therefore, the first sentence said, wind is not good. So you must find a place which is sheltered against the wind. So therefore, you have, whenever people talk about feng shui, they always say, uh, you have a, a green dragon on the left, you have a white tiger on the right, uh, you have a phoenix in front, and you have a tortoise at the back. And what are those things? These are shelters against the wind. So that's a number one rule in feng shui. You find a good house, the house must be sheltered against the wind. So that's why I don't suggest people live on the top of a tower. Uh, I don't suggest the rich people don't, don't find living on the penthouse of a tower building is good. Uh, so therefore, because in feng shui, we consider those those places on the top of a mountain, on the top of a tower, has too strong wind. You have low shelter to protect you against the wind. So therefore, the first thing you have to remember is when you choose a house, you must look for shelter against the wind. Uh, so that's why you never see the Chinese build a grave in the middle of a desert. 
No way. Uh, we don't build in the middle of the ocean. We don't build on the top of a mountain. All we build is only when we observe there's a protection on the right, protection on the left, protection behind, protection in front. So this is, uh, you may have seen pictures like this. Uh, These four animals people always talk about is the number one factor in feng shui, shelter against the wind. Okay, that is the part one of that sentence. Uh, so part two, uh, this is, we talk about wind. Part two, part two is talk about water. So why we need to observe water? Because the energy is carried by the dragon, and the dragon is the mountain. Uh, so therefore you see a mountain goes all the way. So if the mountain continues to move, move uh, you do, the energy will follow the, the dragon, follow the dragon to another place. So therefore if you want to catch the chi, you must find the place where the dragon stop. And how do you know the dragon stop? Uh, water. So therefore, because in the landscape, there are only two kinds of land. Uh, either it's a tall object called a mountain or an open ground called water. Uh, for example, this is already water. Uh, you don't need to see the ocean. You don't need to see the river. So as long as the mountain goes all the way here, and it stops, and there's an open ground, that is the boundary of water. So don't, therefore, that is the spot where the dragon stops. Uh, because beyond that spot, no more dragon, water. So therefore, when the dragon stop, the energy is there. So that spot is considered the dragon stand because it's where the dragon stop, and of course, the energy will concentrate in that spot. Uh, so therefore, I show you some examples of what the Chinese people consider a good feng shui site, and you will understand this. So this is a very famous. Uh, spot in Lia Beijing. Uh, you may have visited Ming Tombs. Ming Tomb is the valley of the kings in China. That means all the kings of the Ming Dynasty, uh, only, only four uh, is not buried there. Uh, Thirteen of the kings were buried there. So then, how, how do they choose this place? So you can see this is the first tomb. Uh, why he chose this spot? First thing, this is where the dragon stopped. Because behind this tomb, you see a big mountain. Huh? And the mountain goes long, 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 long way. That is the dragon. And the dragon happened to finish here, stops here. Uh, and because beyond this spot is open ground, therefore the water begins. That uh, is called the boundary of water. Second thing is, this is very well protected against the wind. Uh, you can see this open space. It's not totally open. It's all surrounded with mountains. So that spot is what we call a dragon's den, because that is where the wind is protected uh, uh, by shelter, and that is the boundary of water where the energy stops. Uh, so we can see a physical uh, grave in Hong Kong. Uh, this is a typical Chinese grave. And this is, where is this grave? In New Territories, and that is this one. And you can see where they pick the spot to, to build this grave. Exactly at the spot where the mountain stops. Uh, the mountains go all the way here, here. So therefore, uh, finally, beyond this spot is the open ground. So therefore, where the mountain stop, that means the dragon stop at the boundary of water. Uh, you can see more clear with this picture. Uh, therefore, you can see that beyond this grave is the water, open ground. And this water is all protected. Uh, you can see where this is uh, a protection in front. We call a table mountain, uh, like, a, like a king sitting uh, on, the, on the throne, and in front, the first layer is a table. Uh, and then there are protection on the left, protection on the right. Uh, and po even protection on, uh, behind, definitely, because the dragon behind. So that, what you, that is the essence of wind and water. So, so simple, uh, now I explain to you, uh, no mystery at all. Uh, wind means shelter against the wind, water means you have to make sure the dragon has stopped. Uh, if the dragon doesn't stop, it moves to another place. You have to chase the dragon to another place until you see water. When you see water, dragon stops, 
That is the spot where you have good energy. Okay, so far you follow. Huh? Am I considered to be lean? <laughs> okay, so even this concept is used in buildings. Uh, for example, this is the six star hotel, traditional hotel in Hong Kong. Uh, actually, I'm their consultant. Uh, so you can, but of course, when it's built, I, I was not born. Uh, it was 1930s, there, the building was built. And they were built, built based on feng shui. So they built based on this. For what purpose? Why they extend two arms outside? Because at that time, they are facing a very open land opposite the Victoria Harbor. They are facing no shelters. Uh, if they just make a normal building with the entrance entering from the road, so that, the energy cannot stay. So therefore, the, all the energy will just pass and will disperse into the Victoria Harbor. So therefore, the architect at that time already have feng shui idea. So therefore, he designed a building like this. So the car comes from Chim Sa Chui, enters, there's a fountain, uh, and the car has to enter like this, and have to exit like this. So therefore, the car drives the energy into the entrance. The entrance is here, not here. And then in front of the entrance, they put a pair of lion. And what is the lion for? Uh, you only see Chinese lions are in the front entrance. Don't put lions inside your house. Uh, because lions is to guard the energy in front of your door. <laughs> uh, so lions will be harmful inside the house. So therefore, uh, that, that is how they design a peninsular hotel. So I, as you are in Hong Kong, uh, these are the lions. Uh, it's a fountain. Uh, you notice the water of the fountain goes in. Uh, there's also one feng shui belief, the water should come in, not go out. Go out, you spend your money. Okay. Uh, yeah, these are feng shui animals. Okay, okay, as you are in Hong Kong, huh? so we say Hong Kong actually, why is it so unique? Huh? Out of the big landscape of China, so why Hong Kong, this little city, becomes so special? Uh, it's not just a financial center, it's a feng shui center. Yeah. So therefore the term to describe the feng shui of Hong Kong is like this. Uh, the dragon turns the head to greet the ancestor. So that means this term was not invented by me. It was invented by feng shui masters thousands of years ago. When the first feng shui master come to Hong Kong, they already give this special term uh, to de describe the feng shui of Hong Kong. So why is it like this? Uh, so first thing is you look at the map of China. Where is Hong Kong? Uh, now you are here. Here is here, Hong Kong. Huh? And China has three most important cities. You can consider China as one of the, uh, Hong Kong is one of the three most important cities in China. So, Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong. Uh, so why I say these three cities are most important? Because they are all connected to a dragon. Because you look at the landscape of China, uh, China is all the mountains of China is from the western side. So all the mountains go from west towards the east to join the Pacific Ocean. And China was divided by three great rivers. And the first river is Yellow River. Second river is Yangtze River. And then Pearl River. Uh, so therefore, the land above the Yellow River we call the Lofton Dragon, Dragon from the Loft. And Lofton Dragon come all the way and stop at Beijing. So therefore Beijing already supported by the chi of the Lofton Dragon. Second dragon is the Middle Dragon. The Middle Dragon is between Yellow River and Yangtze River. And all the way this Middle Dragon stops at the mouth of Yangtze River. That's Shanghai. So therefore Shanghai is supported by the Middle Dragon. Then how about Hong Kong? Uh, our little Hong Kong is supported by the Southern Dragon because the dragon is between Yangtze River and Pearl River. And this is Southern Dragon ends up in Hong Kong. So therefore we have massive amount of energy. Uh, we are actually one of the three most important cities in China. Uh, so then, then, now it shows us we are receiving Massive amount of energy from the southern dragon of China. Then, how does Hong Kong receive it? 
So therefore, the energy of China comes into Hong Kong from northeast. This is our uh, we call the mother of all the dragons. Uh, first thing is Tai Mo San. So this is the tallest mountain in Hong Kong territory. So we call this the mother, the parent. Uh, and then from the mother, it divided into three dragons, three sons, going three direction. The one going directly south stops at Lion Rock. Uh, when you come all the way from the airport to, uh, not from the airport, from Kowloon uh, to, to Gold Coast, you pass through the Lion Rock. And the Lion Rock is the first, the middle dragon. The dragon stops here. And beyond Lion Rock is uh, open land, Kowloon Peninsula. So already the dragon energy become very strong. Uh, if you measure the distance between Chim Sa Tre, uh, you know Chim Sa Tre, you must visit if it's first time here the most expensive tourist spot, uh, up to the foot of Lion Rock, and then you find the midpoint. Where is the midpoint? Mong Kok. Uh, Mong Kok, you also need to visit if you have time, Ladies Market, most famous shopping place in the world. And also, what does Mong Kok mean? In Chinese, it means the prosperous corner. So therefore, at that time, uh, you can, I don't know who named this place, they already know that is a good feng shui spot, very prosperous, Mong Kok. And then, now we have two other dragons. Uh, one goes to the west, forming Lantau Island, creating protection on the, on the western side. And another one going to the east, uh, that is here, this one. Uh, and it passed through this very narrow gap called Li Yuman. Uh, all the, all the big ships passing through this gap. But the dragon hasn't stopped. Uh, we consider the dragon submerged a little and come up and eventually drawn up with the mountain in Hong Kong Island. And finally, this eastern dragon stops at here, Victoria Peak. So therefore, the shape of Hong Kong is like this. If you play Tai Chi, you know this is a very firm foundation. Uh, so therefore, you have the eastern dragon going back like this, the western dragon like this. So all the energies are protecting right in front of Kowloon, in front of, this is the Victoria Harbor. So therefore, this kind of landscape where you can find in the whole world. No, I cannot. Uh, now Singapore is trying to copy. Because Singapore, Marina Bay Sands. Marina Bay Sands is like this. Uh, they build this hotel to protect the energy at Marina Bay, exactly the same. Uh, okay, so therefore you can see this kind of landscape has allowed Victoria Harbor to be the lifeline of Hong Kong. All the most powerful energy from Southern Dragon of China ends up in Victoria Harbor. And the Victoria Peak serves as a shelter. The energy in the harbor will not escape so that's why so powerful energy is on both sides of the Victoria Harbor. So that is Chim Sha Tre on this side and Central and Causeway Bay on the other side. Huh? So therefore you should spend more time in Hong Kong. Huh? Make sure you visit these are energy spots. Go to the peak, go to the Victoria Peak. You look to the north, you will see. You cannot believe the energy is so heavy, so powerful. Uh, okay, uh, this is, uh, I, I, I take you a tour around if I have time. Okay, this is a uh, ladies market, that's Lion Rock, uh, Lion Rock ladies market in Mong Kok, Kowloon. And you can see the energy. Uh, this is the Victoria Harbor between the Victoria Peak and Kowloon Chim Sa Tre. Uh, this is Victoria Peak looking down. This is uh, IFC. Yeah. So you see all the energies are here. And then uh, you can see a uh, beautiful city. So this is where my office is located, Star House. Uh, very expensive place now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually there's a shop in Star House just under my office at the, at the ground level. Uh, uh, five years ago it was sold at 80,000 US dollar per square foot. Uh, in Hong Kong dollars, 450,000 Hong Kong dollar per square foot, like this. 
So that is breaking the world record at the time. But now, five years later, I don't know uh, which place break the record. Huh? OK. OK. Yeah. So, so this is one child. Huh? So there's one feng shui story in Hong Kong. Huh? There are several feng shui stories. Huh? One of them you may have heard about is the Bank of China Tower. So this sharp angle. Yeah. It's a very complicated story. The sharp angle, this Bank of China Tower was built with a sharp angle pointing towards this important building, government's house. So therefore, uh, in the 1980s when this building was being constructed, unfortunately, the governor at that time called Sir uh, uh, Edward Yu. Uh, Edward Yu. He died of heart attack. Uh, when he was taking a business trip to Beijing. And then the second governor come, uh, this is David Wilson. Uh, he suffered serious injury when he go hiking. And then the third governor come, you still hear he's talking, uh, is Chris Patton. Uh, Chris Patton has heart surgeries bypass. So therefore, uh, actually, <laughs> they realize the sharp angle is not good feng shui. Uh, sharp angle is like this, pointing to you. So therefore, uh, they try to uh, cure. Uh, actually, the story is, but they engaged the wrong feng shui guy. Uh, so they found some trees to try to hide this angle, but it doesn't work. Because feng shui also you need to look at. Uh, so far, what I'm talking to you is only part one, form school. Feng shui also we have to look at the abstract energy, which is part two. Compass School. Compass School talk about the theory of the five elements. Huh? So we have, we believe if all these kind of energies are uh, actually belong to elements. So for example, uh, like a sharp angle is a fire element. Uh, if a fire element, you plant trees, what does it result? The trees are wood element. Uh, wood produce fire. Everybody can know, understand this. Wood produce fire. So therefore, you plant trees, it creates more fire, make the angle even more threatening. So therefore, what you should put there should be earth element, uh, because the five element cycle is fire produce earth. So when it produces earth, it will release energy. It will be exhausted, uh, weakened. It will be weakened. So that's why. Uh, they doesn't, it doesn't help. After they plant tree, it makes more coral. Uh, okay, uh, so we don't have time to go too much into these kind of stories. So now, uh, you can see from here, uh, this is the angle. Uh, it's really cutting at the back of the governor's, governor's house. So what really should do? Uh, so I will use earth. Uh, so therefore, there are different tricks of using earth. Uh, Okay, so therefore, uh, so this is uh, a little bit introduction. Uh, we have so far we have talked about the form school. Form school means the shape of the mountain and water. So here, uh, we introduce a little bit about the compass school. Compass school is the abstract energy. How do you understand those energy? So first basic rule we have to understand is everything means elements. So therefore. Uh, uh, in Chinese feng shui, we say every shape carries an element. Uh, like a round shape is metal, uh, a rectangular shape is wood, uh, and then a irregular shape is water, uh, and a sharp angle is fire. Uh, so that's why you cannot put wood to cure a sharp angle. You must use earth. Uh, this is earth, five pieces of earth. Even lumbers carries element, because number five means earth. Uh, so therefore, sometimes you may be wondering why a lot of buildings, they put five flat poles at the entrance. That actually has a feng shui purpose. Uh, because number five is earth. So therefore, maybe on the opposite side of that building, mm -hmm. there is an angle. Uh, so I see if I can uh, show you this. This is Chum Kong building. Uh, Chum Kong building is on the other side. Very famous, belong to our the richest man in Asia, Li Ka Sing. Uh, so his building, actually, you have five flagpoles: one, two, three, four, five. And that is not at the entrance; that's on the side of the building. What for? Huh? Very seldom a building usually put the flagpoles in the in the front entrance. Why they put five here? 
is for facing this sharp angle. And this sharp angle is the Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. Uh, because Hong Kong Shanghai Bank's sharp angle is exactly facing this Chiang Kong building. And then uh, if you have chance to visit Macau, uh, therefore you see uh, a lot of feng shui you can see in Macau. Because particularly this hotel, this casino, uh, Casino Lisboa was owned by Chinese uh, uh, Stanley Ho. So to, your, to go into your house. Uh, and then, uh, what shall I do? First thing I have to tell you where is your good energy, where is your bad energy. Is this place good for sleeping? Is this place good for working? So therefore, I use this instrument. I can. This instrument actually carries a lot of formulas and a lot of numbers, and those numbers are energy. Actually, we have discovered there are nine different kinds of energy, number one to number nine. Uh, we call them the flying stars. Uh, so getting a little bit headache now, because now we are going into mathematics. Uh, so actually, feng shui is very mathematical. So therefore, if you engage feng shui service and this guy just come in and then he smell the house and then he say, you should put something here, you should put something there, he's cheating. You should kick him out. Uh, because feng shui is very precise, very mathematical. It's like engineering. We need very accurate measurements. We need to calculate. Uh, we don't base on intuitions. Because you cannot, you cannot feel the house. You have to, like physics, you have to calculate exactly where are the good energy, where are the bad energy. Uh, so any mistake, will bring totally di different results. <laughs> so therefore, we have to be very careful in measurement. And this is a quite a complicated instrument, uh, very technical. Uh, that's why I, I give training to uh, people. It takes quite a long time to master, to understand everything in the compass. So therefore, I just tell you uh, a little bit. Uh, for example, like this is Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. So how do we understand the energy of Hong Kong Shanghai Bank? Actually, we will make an energy map. Uh, this is the energy map. Uh, it was this map, we divide the space into nine positions. We call a nine square chart. So therefore, every point of space, as long as you can identify the center, immediately you can divide the floor plan into eight directions. Uh, north, south, east, west, uh, north, east, north, west, south, east, south, west, plus a center. So therefore, everything has nine positions. And then this chart will tell you what are the energies existing in those nine positions. Uh, so then how do you read those energy? So today, uh, remember number eight is the best energy today. Uh, so therefore, you can see in China, they picked the Olympic game, 2008, August the 8th, 8 p.m. So therefore, they understand this. Also, because now we are into the, in feng shui, we also have a time factor. And the time factor tells us we are into 20 years, called age number eight. Age number eight starts from 2004 until 2024. Uh, so therefore, if you do not absorb anything I talk about this in this hour, at least you understand number eight is the best. So therefore, go home and find a telephone ending with number eight. Uh, and make sure your hotel room ends with number eight. <laughs> so, and, and your car number ending with number eight. So that's very beneficial. And also, what is the worst number today? Number five. Uh, so therefore, again, if your telephone number ends with five, you better take the first chance to change. Uh, so the idea comes from here. So because the time we divide into 180 year cycle, uh, this was set up by Yellow Amp Law at 2600 BC. So 180 year cycle, and we divide further into 20, 20, 20 year periods. And then uh, therefore each period has a number. So therefore we have come to now number eight. Uh, so number eight already passed 10 years. So the, we still have 10 years to come. So therefore today we should still hold on to number eight, uh, which is the best number. Choose number eight. Uh, and then uh, besides number eight, number nine is also very good because number nine is immediate future. So therefore if you cannot choose eight, 
two slides already good. So then, uh, what are the meaning of those numbers? Uh, so you see, now you can see. Uh, so number A is called current post plus number. Uh, number nine is called future post plus number. Number one takes a longer time to come because the year number one become possible is 2044. So then the worst number is between two and seven uh, because they are outdated. And out of them, out of this, number five is the worst. So recently you noticed uh, Robin William, big news, uh, Robin William come to resign. You know what's uh, uh, his house number? Number 95. Yeah, that was quite a big picture, somebody putting flower in front of his house. Yeah. So recently, this happened in Hong Kong. And there's a pregnant woman. She was waiting bus in the Hong Kong side. And there's a big tree fell down on her head. And unfortunately, she died. Uh, and she was a pregnant woman, and they still try to rescue the baby. And the woman standing exactly in front of number 55, uh, the house number 55. So therefore, so number five is the worst number. And they change position from year to year. Now, for example, the, this year number five happened to be in the northwest. Now, did you notice everything that happened this year somewhat related to northwest? Uh, so you look at northwest of Iraq, what is happening. Many people died there. Uh, and then, uh, you, if you read the news, we have big flooding now in northwest of India, uh, killing a lot of people. And big flooding in Pakistan, uh, also northwest of India. Uh, and then even, where is UK? Uh, where is England? Uh, now they are voting for Scotland. And where, what is it? Northwest. Uh, so therefore, this energy they change from time to time. Uh, so therefore, uh, this is for everybody's house. You have a northwest position. Uh, if you happen uh, to sleep in the northwest, so this month, partic uh, this year actually, particularly this month. This month means September 8th to October 8th. You have to put a metal in China uh, to minimize the misfortune of this number five. Uh, because uh, you will be stay in the Northwest for the whole year, uh, for the whole Chinese year until uh, February the 4th, 2015. Uh, so uh, therefore, actually, uh, I hope to uh, give you a, a more information about feng shui, but I think I just make you more confusing. Uh, so therefore, yes, this is a subject which is a profession. That's why I teach many students. I, I, at the first thing I advise them is you are training yourself to be professional. Professional means you must be very confident with your knowledge. Uh, you must learn. You must, after you learn, you must practice. Uh, you can see how do you train a, a consultant to help, supposed to help people if you are not good at your knowledge. So therefore, it takes quite uh, some time by some effort, uh, there are a lot of uh, materials, a lot of things to understand, but it's a very important subject because everybody has a house, everybody has a home, everybody has an office. And if you don't pay attention to feng shui, it still play with you. Uh, so therefore, it still exists around you. Uh, sometimes if you don't care about feng shui, that you just don't realize why why you get sick, why your money doesn't come, uh, why you quarrel with your wife. Uh, but actually, if you understand more about feng shui, everything has a reason.